This video will show you how to control the entities while the mission is playing. Your training mission may be very dynamic. Being able to quickly control all players in the scenario is the key to making your mission effective and believable. We've engineered MACE to make this process as smooth as possible. It may be useful to know that MACE, historically, specialized in controlling air assets. Some of the controls still reflect this, but you'll find out that they translate well to dismounted entities and ground vehicles. For this demonstration, I have four strikers set out in the open and an A-10. First, you should be able to recognize what entity is the currently selected platform. The currently selected platform has a heading line extending from its nose and has an oval underneath. After you have selected your entity, you can use the various controls to change its behavior. You can also select more than one platform by holding down the left mouse button and the shift key to draw a box around the entities you want to group up. You can store that selection as a group by holding down the control key and a number key. Then you can recall that group by pressing Alt and the respective number key. These top two strikers I'll put in group 1 and the rest in group 2. You can see that when I press Alt 1 and Alt 2, the selections change. To go back to selecting an individual, simply click on it. To add a individual to the group, hold down the Shift key and click on that entity. We're almost ready to get these strikers rolling, but there are a few more things I want to show you. Take note of the heading line. When it is black, that means it's in the intent mode, meaning it's going to go about its pre-planned behavior that you've set by these waypoints. I can move this waypoint around and you'll see that the striker will head towards it. That is one way you can control an entity, by constantly changing the plan. It may be useful to do this on entities that you don't want to babysit. Modify its waypoints and let it run its course. You'll notice that it stopped once it reached its final waypoint. If I want to have it patrol between two waypoints, I can just add another. I can do this by right-clicking on the striker's waypoint, navigating to Operations, and select Add Waypoint After. My cursor will turn into crosshairs and I can click on the location of that new waypoint. If you want to add multiple waypoints quickly, you may want to use the Route Builder mode on the Mission Builder tab. Now when I go to the Entity Control menu on the ribbon and select Intent Mode, the striker will start its patrol. The default speed is 10 miles an hour. Say for instance, I want him to speed up after waypoint 1. I can right-click on that waypoint, select Properties, select Leg Speed, and choose 40 miles an hour. Now you will see that the striker speeds back to waypoint X, then slows down and route back to waypoint 1. If I wanted to dictate a speed for all waypoints, I can set that under Set Route Speed. I'll set that to 30. Upon reaching the next waypoint, the striker will go to 30 miles per hour along all waypoints. If I were to repeat this method, but instead right-clicking on the striker to set the speed, it would go to 30 miles per hour at that moment. You may ask, how can I be sure? The answer is a very simple and handy tool called Platform Status. On the ribbon, go to the Analysis tab and select the aircraft-shaped icon. This will bring up a window that displays almost all the information you may need about the state of your currently selected platform. Platform status is an excellent tool for cross-checking your settings and keeping tabs on your entities. Now back to the waypoints. At each waypoint, I can pre-plan an action upon arrival. Under Properties, I can select Add Action. In this case, I will select Stop. The striker approaches to the waypoint, faces towards the next waypoint, and halts. To get him moving again, I can press the Intent button up on the ribbon. Under the Property window, you can also dictate an arrival time, if your scenario is scripted by the minute. Lastly, you can toggle the waypoint arrival behavior. In the case of aircraft, they tend to lead their turns to stay on course, so having this toggled off is the most realistic choice. So now that we've mastered planning the behavior and changing the plan, let's explore the delta mode. This means a deviation from the plan. 
One way to do this is to click on the heading line and drag it in a direction I want the striker to go. It will take the last command at speed and head in that direction. The heading line will remain white, indicating that the entity is in delta mode. Another indication that the entity is in the delta mode is the illuminated triangle icon in the intent drop-down menu. To go back to the pre-planned route, simply press the intent button. Some other options you have for control in delta mode is to use the menus in the entity control tab or entity control window. You can dial in the entity speed, direction, and altitude. You'll find this especially useful for air assets to command precise settings. Sometimes you'll find it easier to set a formation and only control the lead entity. Let's have another striker follow the first one. Right click on the striker and select Actions, Formation, and Trail. The cursor will turn into pulsing crosshairs. Select the first striker. You will now see a blue line extending between the two and the striker will try to get itself into formation as the lead moves around. I'll add the other strikers too and choose left and right abreast formations this time. I'll have them follow the second vehicle. You can see that I can now control the whole formation just by changing the delta of the lead vehicle. Now I will halt my formation and move on to the A-10. This whole time he was flying between his default waypoints. When controlling air entities, you'll find the orbit tool to be very useful. Go to the entity controls and select start orbit tool. Go back to the mission area and hold your left mouse button down in the area you want to create an orbit. Draw out your orbit and release the left mouse button to complete it. If you want an orbit in the opposite direction, you can move the mouse in the other way while drawing. Take note, you may make an orbit that the aircraft can't fly at its current speed. You may see it constantly trying to swing around to meet all of its waypoints if it's flying too fast. Hold down the control button and click on the waypoints to move them around where you want them. If you want to have the aircraft advance to the next waypoint, Click the Cycle to Next Waypoint button. If you want to reset the waypoints to their default, click the Reset This Platform's Waypoints button. In the next video, we'll be discussing weapons employment, combat, and reaction behaviors.